the poor and I'm going to talk to the lecture, I'd like to ask anyone from the audience to answer this question. Who, who is Vibes Carter? spectators turned up at the University of the West Indies on March 10 to hear dancehall artist Vibes Cartel give a lecture. Cartel was his usual controversial self touching on issues such as who he is, tattooing, his influences, devil worshipping and skin bleaching. First of all, I am Adija Palmer, dancehall artist slash hero, businessman, proud father of seven children, I grew up in a wonderful community in Portmore, the second child of my father, third for my mother, who had a my daughter from a previous relationship. I attended Waterford Infant School, Waterford Primary School, where I passed my accommodations for Calabar High School. Unfortunately, expelled in the 10th grade for truancy because at the time I had already engulfed my whole being and I was calling school down at various corporate era studios and such. I knew from a tender age that I was destined for a career in music as I used to watch my uncles who were aspiring DJs, none of them ever was, perform regularly at my house on an informal sound system much to the delight of me, who was their audience, only audience at the time. In Jamaica, dance and music has been getting a lot of flack recently. And not recently, since its emergence from a wide cross-section of society, but vice music has also been at the centre of a lot of controversy over the years. But my music is a friend to some people and a foe to others. But that is totally acceptable to me based on the mere fact that dancehall itself has always been social commentary reflecting the duplicitous foundation of the Jamaican experience. As you students, as you, as you students would know, Sir Walter Rodney alluded to this factor in Browning in my region. Jamaica is not out of many one people. Instead it is an economically, ethnically, politically and religiously divided country. So, whereas reggae spoke to the Garvian message of one love, dancehall generally speaks to the Bogle message of rebellion, which in my opinion is why it is sometimes feared, scrutinized and demonized by our post-colonial masters and their subordinates. My music is controversial, but so was reggae which interestingly was labeled rebel music back in the day. So reggae was also controversial. Before it, it, before it was fully accepted first by the lower class of people where it originated, then by the upper class of society after it had garnered international recognition. So basically, it went abroad and came back to us and we accepted it because you know Jamaican love foreign things. The point that I'm trying to make is that the stone that the builder refused shall become the head corner stone. And right now, dance hall has become that disregarded stone. Because look into this. 30 years ago, Bob Marley was despised and ridiculed by the upper echelons of society as a dirty rasta boy, ganja smoking, and promoting civil unrest. Now, now, that same Bob Marley is poster boy for the Jamaica tourist board. We didn't mix the anymore. See me. In, in, in my view, Cartel is not merely a DJ, but also a poet of Shakespearean stature. And I say this because Vibes Cartel is not the best, but one of the best doing dancehall. And I say this because my lyrics at first glance may seem simple, but different layers can be peeled away to reveal a much more complex meaning, depending on age, knowledge, and nationality of the listener. Two quick examples. Some breed of women, but some women have them. They were cooler than Reagan and Gorbachev them. 
The second night speaks not about police in war, but about the actual Cold War era between America and Russia. With respective leaders at a critical point in time were Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev. Mm -hmm. Undoubtedly, the media were all present tonight. The media uses Vice Cartel to sell papers. You read the thing? To sell papers and to gain viewership by broadcasting the negatives but never giving the positives similar power. Example. Every day there is a headline, an article, or a letter to the editor. <laughs> On one topic of another, it's either it's about cartel skin, allegations of feuding with cartel and he, she and the old lady, or it's just a general negative showcase of cartel. Yet when cartel does his regular good deeds, and I repeat, regular, <laughs> yes, the media couldn't care less. You will see in bold headlines, cartel encourages Jamaicans to scar skin. What about cartel, first DJ to open his own rum factory? Oh, you will easily see on the front page, cartel and such and such at ads. Fine, because that is news. But what about giving the same front page headline to cartel to his business ventures employs over 30 at Jamaica? My fascination with tattoos came from my favorite rapper of all time, Tupac Amaru Kapoor. And ever since I, I saw his thug life tax on his stomach, I decided to make my skin a living, breathing canvas for the visual arts. Okay? My skin marks, no pun intended, many milestones in my life and represent another form of expression for me. For me, tattoos, although they're on the exterior, they, 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 they really tell a different story and they tell a lot about my interior. And I'm not just for show, but rather, as, as the PowerPoint shows, uh, can serve as a history book of my life. Oh, really? One may not understand why I alter my skin and as such may formulate his or her opinions, many of which might paint me in a negative light, but they are, as I said before, merely opinions, not fact. Scientific fact. Less than 4% of DNA determines our race and skin color. Less than 4% of DNA, according to... According to Google. Google. Oh. Many people, no, seriously, no, no. Many people, many people talk about garbizing, black pride, etc. I have no problem with black pride, and I can assure you that my skin alteration has nothing to do with self-hate or, or opposition to blackness and garbism. And if, we, and if we should look into the issues of the black race as it relates to our advancement or non-advancement thereof worldwide, I think altering skin color would not be our biggest problem. Okay, I maintain that many appearance altering practices that started out controversial and taboo are now widely accepted. Did you know that when a male, when a male, this is fact, when a male in the 17th century were Aryans, that means you were a pirate. When a male wore Aryans in the 1950s, it meant you were a homosexual. No, when a male wears an Aryan, it's just trendy. You know what I mean? So from controversial and taboo to gaining widespread acceptance. You know what I mean? So, with that being said, I further maintain that bleaching today doesn't mean the same as bleaching 25 years ago. Today, listen to me, this is opinionated, this is my opinion. So when the lecture finish, you can ask a few questions as to why I hold on to what I do. But I maintain that bleaching now doesn't mean the same as bleaching 25 years ago. Today, we are a much prouder race who know that we can do what we want as far as style is concerned. We dictate styles and regard them as just that, styles. So as controversial as bleaching might be right now, I bask in this controversy with cake soap as my son time. A lot of people say Vibes Cartel worships the devil. And 
people recently in the media and one specific artist has even gone as far to say that I have sold my soul to the devil. So this is a question now for the audience. I would like to know how does one go about selling his soul to the devil? Does the devil have a bank account? Alright. Do you first put an ad in the classifieds, sold for sale, in good condition, leave a number to call, the devil calls you, and you work out the fine print of it. He gives your manager's check for your soul. You go to his bank, and back from a commercial bank, and you see. And how does it go? I'd like to ask someone in the crowd, how does one go about selling his soul? But, in concluding, I would like to say that my life is my art, and my art is my life. Life is a colorless coloring book, and we have all the crayons to make it as colorful as we want by the choices that we make and how we live our lives. In my life, everything I do from controversial lyrics, bleaching, etc., everything I do in my life is precisely orchestrating and executing in a specific way to achieve a desired result. Okay? So, I am conscious of everything that I do because I decided to make my life pretty like a coloring book. Thank you. Good night. Good evening. My question I'm asking is, you see yourself as somebody who's an uplifting person. What I'm wondering is, isn't there some sort of morality in you as well as a carry? Because I see have tattoos. religious or political leader. I'm an entertainer who does adult-oriented music. So, I'm not here to, 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 to preach my morality or lack of. I'm just here to do music to the best of my ability. That's all. If you need morals, I suggest you, you go to the nearest church. Question one, I'm saying that I was on stage the house. I'm going to kill up on it. See? And Kina said, they have the head that he and I have come to tell me to come back on stage so We want to know where you are going to have. Listen. Vibe Scarten. Vibe Scarten and no DJ in the entertainment industry is in any feud, cascas, bickery, or anything of the matter right now. If you notice, a lot of artists throwing word at Vibe Scartel, doing sounds, Vibe Scartel is not answering. I'm just looking ahead, doing my music, and making my money. So, me and the artists, not in a note. Especially those people. Does a teacher Palma ever disapprove of the behavior of Vibe Scartel?
the region and, 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 the, and, the, and the rounds of applause that he receives for his utter rubbish is, is, is appalling. Well, I thought it was a good lecture. Um, it was what I expected it to be to some extent. Um, the, the turnout itself was greater than what I anticipated. I mean, when I look outside on the, the, the lawn itself, I mean, it was literally hundreds of students and public members as well. Um, Cartel delivered what I expected him to do. Um, he did not exactly answer a lot of the questions. To the full ex ex extent, he left the audience guessing which will continue the intrigue around Vibes Cartel himself. Um, the most disappointing part about the lecture, I thought, um, was the, the question and answer segment. Seems as if um, most of who went up to do the, the, the questioning with Cartel themselves came either to the lecture itself late or they were some part of some Bible club or something. They kept on posing the same religious question over and over. But all in all, it was a good lecture except for the part where the, the students asked the questions. Um, I thought they repeated the one question over and over as if they were some part of some biblical club trying to demonize the man further. But he answered well and I thought that was good of him.